Hello class, welcome to Geometry Lesson 10.4, Inscribed Angles. So our uh, question for today is, how is the measure of an inscribed angle related to its intercepted arc? Our learning goal is to use the relationship between angles and arcs and circles to find their measures. And our vocab today is going to be the inscribed angle. So let's go ahead and start defining it. An inscribed angle has its vertex on the circle and its sides contain chords of the circle. So you may recall in 10.1, uh, the very first lesson of the chapter, we described a central angle. And we mentioned that a central angle, so this angle here is a central angle, has its vertex on the center of the circle, hence why it's called central angle. And the, and the uh, sides of the angle are radii. Now for an inscribed angle, the vertex is on the circle itself, not on the center, it's on the actual circle and the sides are actually chords. So remember that this is a chord because you have both endpoints on the circle. This will be another example of a chord in which, in which both endpoints are on the circle. So the inscribed angle has chords uh, and it's the angle between those chords. The measure of an inscribed angle, it turns out is always half the length of its intercepted arc. So for instance, if I know that this central angle here is 50 degrees, you may recall from 10.1 that the measure of its arc is also 50 degrees. Now, if I know the central angle and the intercepted arc, the measure of the arc, then I also can figure out the measure of the inter inscribed angle here by cutting that angle in half. So this is actually going to be 25 degrees. And that's known as the inscribed angle's theorem. The measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. And there are three cases uh, depending on where the angle is in relation to the center. So the, if the center is on the angle, um, that's case one. If it's inside or outside, that's cases two and three, respectively. But the result is the same in that if you know the inscribed angle, then you know the, or if you know the intercepted arc, then you always know the inscribed angle because it's always going to be half of that. So let's look at our first example. We're given that DG is 45.6 degrees. So we'll label that here. And uh, we want to find angles E and F. So we want to find these two angles. We'll notice that angle E, the intercepted arc for angle E is between DG, is arc DG. And so we can cut um, that in half to get angle E by the inscribed angles theorem. So it's equal to half of its inscribed arc, which is in this case 28.6 degrees, or 28, or rather it should be 22.8 degrees. So uh, because we know um, the arc, we know the inscribed angle. Similarly, for angle F, the intercepted arc for F is also 45.6, and therefore it must be the same as angle E. So the measure of angle F is the same thing as the measure of angle E. It's still going to be half of the intercepted arc, which is going to be 22.8 degrees. All right, so for the next one, it says it wants us to find the measure of RST. So recall that this here, this chord happens to be a diameter if I were to draw this from R to T. The reason why that's important is because that the central angle of a diameter is always going to be 180 degrees you can see that this is a half circle, semicircle here, and therefore this arc for the semicircle must be 180 degrees as well. Because we have the inter intercepted arc now, we can cut in half to get this angle. So we find that the measure of angle RST is half of its intercepted arc, which is 180 divided by two, so it's gonna be 90 degrees. So this happens to be a right angle. All right, so let's look at the next example using the same theorem. We're given that ABC is, um, arc ABC is 184. So let's use that first. So ABC, this arc here is 184 degrees. So let's go ahead and figure out some of the angles based off of that. Well, we know that the, this angle here has the um, intercepted arc, which is actually ABC. The, re the reason I know the a intercepted arc is it's always between where the angle, where the uh, chord ends up and where the chord ends up on the other side as well. So it's between those two chords uh, for angle ABC. And so now we know the inter intercepted angle is 184. We can cut it in half to get ADC. We'll just call it angle D though, just to make things simple. 
So the measure of angle D is half of its intercepted arc, or 92 degrees. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, see if we can get uh, angle B. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight its intercepted arc, which is that. So between the A and the C here for angle B. So the measure of angle B is going to be half of that intercepted green arc. In order to find that green arc, though, notice that the red and the green arc add up to 360. They add up to a full circle. And therefore, I could find the green arc by subtracting 184 from 360. And so the green arc is equal to 100, uh, should be 176 degrees. So now that we got the green arc, we can cut that in half and get angle B. This case is going to be 88 degrees. All right, so now that we got the, green, the angle B and angle D, we want to figure out the measures of the other angles. So let's go ahead and uh, just erase that information and start so that we don't, have, we don't have too many things going on. This time they give us BCD is 242. So in order to find that, well, the, that's, that's the intercepted arc of this inscribed angle here. So the measure of angle A is half of that intercepted arc, according to the inscribed angle's theorem. And it's going to be 121 degrees. And then finally, we want to figure out angle C. So in order to do that, we're going to look for this angle here. So uh, we need to figure out that arc in order to find angle C. Well, that arc and this blue arc add up to 180, or 360 rather. So we can find this by doing 360 minus 242, which is going to be 118 degrees. And therefore, I can cut that in half to get angle C. All right, so it looks like it's going to be 59 degrees. So we're able to find the measures of all the angles using the inscribed angles theorem for this inscribed quadrilateral. Notice that these two angles add up to 180 and these two angles add up to 180, which makes sense because the arcs themselves added to 360 and therefore it's expected that the angles themselves add up to 180, which is half of 360, according to the inscribed angles theorem. And that's actually the theorem we're going to, the corollary we're going to discuss now. So that was corollary three. The opposite angles of inscribed quadrilaterals are supplementary. Because these two opposite angles, their arcs add up to 360, that must mean that the angles themselves add up to half of 360 or 180. Corollary 1 and corollary 2 we discussed in example 1. If you have two angles with, uh, with their intercepted arcs being the same, then that must mean that the angles must be the same. And corollary 2 of the inscribed angles theorem, it was that if, you, um, if you're inscribed in a semicircle, so if you've got a diameter here, then the inscribed angle for that diameter, or for this semicircle, it has to be a right angle because it has to be half of 180, which is 90. All right, so let's look at a new theorem aside from the, aside from the uh, inscribed angles theorem and the corollaries for it, theorem 10.9, which states that if you have a tangent line, recall that this is a tangent line here, touches the, point, the circle at one point, and you have a chord, and you want to figure out the angle between the chord and the tangent line, well, it turns out that this behaves like an inscribed angle. Even though this is this here is not an inscribed angle, it behaves like such, uh, such that if I know the intercepted arc, which is, in this case, this is my intercepted arc, if I know that that's, say, 100 degrees, then this behaves at, like an inscribed angle, such that it's going to be half of that arc. So it's going to be 100 divided by 2, so it behaves the same way. And that's theorem 10-9, is that when you have a tangent and a chord, you want to find, figure out that angle, it's going to be half of its intercepted arc like it would be for an inscribed angle. So let's use an example. So for each of the following measures, find them, assuming DF is tangent to circle Q. So assuming that this is a tangent line, which it looks like one, crosses at one point here, uh, at point E. So we have, so if we want to find the measure of EGH, 
So that's uh, arc EGH rather, that's this arc here. Well, we know that the angle between the chord and its tangent line is 72, and therefore we can double it to get this arc, right? So that's gonna be 72 times two, so it's just gonna be 144. So this is gonna be 72 times two or 144, and that's from theorem 10 dash, um, you know, I, the other theorem, I believe it was theorem 10 dash nine, forgot the number, but it's from earlier. And for EKG, EKJ, if I wanted to find EKJ, let's look at, let's use another color here. So if I wanted to get that arc, well, I know that this is 106 and this is now 144. So I can add these together and subtract it from 360 to get this because these add up to a full circle. So I can do 360 minus that. So that's exactly what I'll do here. So it's going to be 360 minus, and then you add up the other measures, 106 plus the 144. So the 106 plus the 144, uh, in this case, adds up to 250. And so if I subtract that from 360, get 110. All right, so now we want to get uh, the measure of angle H E J. So uh, H E J, that's this angle. Let's use another color here. H E J there. And that's the inscribed angle for this arc here, right? So if this arc is 106. I can cut it in half to get H E J by the inscribed angle's theorem. So we got 106 divided by two is 53 degrees. And then finally we got angle DEJ. So this angle here, which that the uh, we're going to use the theorem that we used here for the purple, um, in which if we know the arc, the intercepted arc, then we know the angle. Okay, so since we know that this green arc is 110, I can divide it by two and get the angle between the tangent and its chord. So 55 degrees. All right, so let's finish up with the final example here. Find each of the following measures, assuming SU is tangent to circle P at point T. So we want to find arc TVW. So we have TVW. And remember, according to the theorem that we used earlier, <clears throat> if we know that the intercepted arc here, then we can figure out the measure of the angle, which is between the chord and a tangent line. It's going to be so if we know that the chord, then we know if we know the angle there, then we know the chord, the 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 uh, arc rather. So if we know that this, this angle is 67, then I know what this red arc has to be. It has to be double 67 for a total of 134 degrees. All right, so now I know the entire length of that of this red one is 134. To get TWX. Let's use another color here. So I want arc TWX. So TWX. So notice that this here, this uh, this is a diameter, and therefore this has to be a half circle, semicircle, and therefore this part has to add to 180. So if this part is 180, I can add 180 plus 74, or rather plus the red in order to get the blue. So let me um, use another color for the 180. So we'll say that the 180 arc, this arc here, this is 180. To get the blue, I take the green plus the red. And the red was, we mentioned it was 134. Okay, so Let's go ahead and change our color here again. So if I wanted to get the blue, I take the red here. Let's do it over here. The red 134 plus the green 180. That's going to give us the blue arc. Um, let's see. So which is equal to, I guess I could just do it here and then write the final answer there. It's going to be 314 degrees. All right, so now we know the blue arc. Let's go ahead and figure out the angle, angle TWX. T 
twx. So let's use purple there. So in order to get this inscri this angle twx, I need to know this arc. In order to find that arc, well, I know the red, right? The red is 134, and I know that the red and the purple adds up to 180, so I can really adds up to a semicircle. So I can really just uh, subtract 180 minus the red in order to get the purple. So let's do that here. So it's going to be 180 minus the red, which is 134, is equal to uh, 46 degrees. So we know that the purple is 46 degrees, and we can cut that in half by the inscribed angle's theorem to get the angle there. Then finally, we got TWV. I'm going to start erasing some of these things here. Uh, let's see. So we got TWV, so this angle here. In order to find that angle, I need to know what this is here. So let me erase all of the rest of this because we don't really need it here for this example. Okay, so we know that the entire red, uh, red part is 134. And we want to find this angle here, this, this arc. So if I wanted to find that arc, well, I know that the whole thing is 134, and I could subtract 74 from it. So we got 134 minus 74 is 60 degrees. And since I know that's, that orange arc is 60 now, I can divide it by 2 and get the angle by the inscribed angle's theorem. All right, that's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you found this useful, and I uh, hope you learned a few things. As usual, I'll see you in the next one.